on Zoom. So what what we're gonna have right now? I think we're supposed to have some announcements first before I uh, I speak or chat or whatever. Yeah. So yes. you're gonna make the announcements, or who's gonna make the announcements? The mother Lila Shakti here. She should. Oh, Goku Bandu. It's good to see you. He's from Fiji. We got someone from Fiji here. And we got people from all over the United States. That's pretty good. Let me just set this up so I can see that. Okay. All right. We are ready to roll. So I don't see Leela Shakti online. Okay, I can. Uh, like so why don't you do the Why don't you do the announcements? Yeah. So uh, we'd, th we'd like to thank everyone for joining online and. Uh, like to welcome uh, His Holiness Bir Krishna Goswami Maharaj, who actually arrived on Wednesday, all the way from Fiji, and we are really happy that Maharaj is here in our association and uh, in a few. few uh, and we are very grateful, Maharaj, that you're giving us a Sunday feast talk today. So, I uh, just wanted to announce um, everyone that you know, because of this pandemic, we are having lots of online classes. And so, for you to actually get tuned in and stay in good Krishna consciousness even while you're at home. So. Uh, um, like every day morning, 6.30 a.m., Bhagavatam class is on mayapur.tv. And then Maharaj will soon start giving the morning classes. So it will be on his Facebook page also. And uh, and also every day evening, uh, we have uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. Drishta Prabhu is organizing readings. Uh, Sriman Bhagavatam reading on Monday. Uh, Chaitan Charitamrita reading on Tuesday. And on Friday, uh, Art of Chanting Hare Krishna. So three days, there's like six to seven, that's reading. And also we have uh, um, every day, every evening, six to 6.30 and nine to 9.30, we are actually in Bhagavatam study. So that's all uh, on conference call. So all these details are actually sent out on our new Goloka email. If you're not on our email, please uh, send, uh, you can actually uh, personally message me your email on this group here, and then I'll add you to our uh, new Goloka group. And that way we'll update you with all our upcoming programs. And um, uh, and also, uh, I see Mother Lila Shakti is here. Uh, Hare Krishna. You have some announcements? You got to take yourself off mute to do that. Lila Shakti, you got to take yourself off mute. There, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So I just, uh, I just announced about a few online classes and also for children, we are having Monday through Thursday, Mother Kamini is organizing 4 to 4.35. She actually does children Krishna conscious stories. And then every Sunday, our Sunday class, uh, Sunday class, which we regularly used to have, is still going on from 4 to 4.40. So even the children can actually join the Sunday feast class, which starts at 5 p.m. So we have many classes and uh, also like since this pandemic, everyone is home, we are actually offering free shipping of Prabhupada's books to your house. So any books, we actually have full sets of Sriman Bhagavatam ready to go. And this is, you know, everyone is home. You can come together with your family and read Sriman Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitam Mita sets. So we are all doing free shipping just to your house. So if you're interested in any of Prabhupada's books, just let us know. Um, I'll put my email address and Mother Lila Shakti. Uh, we'll put our phone numbers on this group chat here, so you can reach out to us and uh, we can help you in any way. Or you know, ship out these books. We'll be happy to do so. Mother Lila Shakti, would you like to? Yes, I was just going to say that um, we're greatly missing everyone's association. <laughs> and I was also thinking that. Um, if anyone is really um, just absolutely in need of, of some uh, prasadam from Sri Sri Radha Golokananda, I'm sure that we would be um, able to deliver some of that to any of you who um, would like, if you just are can't live without the, the wonderful prasadam of the deities. Um, I was thinking about that yesterday. We don't have a, a huge crew for Meals on Wheels, but I think maybe um, a few a few of us would be willing to bring things to your home. So if anybody would like some prasadam, um, you know, just message me or call me, and I can arrange for you. Okay. Any other announcements? So uh, again, we'd like to thank everyone for joining and. Uh, 
uh, without further ado, it's only as great Krishna Goswami Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for giving us your association now. So, please. Okay. One thing is that I see Maha Mantra on. Do you have your guitar with you? So I thought we'd start with something really uplifting. I, I haven't planned on this, but he has this nice song called Don't Worry, which would actually be really good for people in these times of distress. So he's going to play this song for us very quickly, then I'll chant Jai Radha Madhava, and then we'll have our class. So I thought we'd have a little fun. Actually, I just came back from Fiji on a government sponsored, not sponsored, but government arranged flight that I had to pay for. Our government arranged it. And I am in seclusion for at least, or isolation, or whatever you call it, for at least two weeks. Because I want to protect the devotees in case I picked up something. So, Ma Mantra, are you ready? So, this is try to listen to the words. It's very interesting. It's a song that's Don't Worry. Chant Hare Krishna is the name of the song. And I'm on mute. He's on mute. He'll take himself off mute. He knows how to do it. You ready? Or should I give class and you'll do it at the end? Oh, he's ready. Okay, so did you, are you on a computer or what? You gotta take yourself off mute. You are muted. Okay, there it is. You Can on you a, hear me now? You're on a computer or what? Yes. So you, you adjusted the sound the way I told you to have better sound? Yes, I did. Okay, so sing the song. And this is a little entertaining, a little light thing before the class, but I'm sure you'll all enjoy it. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> <clears throat> He's in Fiji. Go, go, go. Whoops. It's a little long I copy. You may want to sing it. Where in a thoughty, don't worry. Just chant and be happy. And if you worry, you make it double, don't worry. Just chant and be happy. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Every 
So that was Ma Mantra from Suva Fiji, yes. who was entertaining us <laughs> by the miracle of the internet. So uh, you can put yourself on uh, mute now, Ma Mantra. So I guess in the next few days when I do this uh, Zoom stuff, we'll have Ma Mantra doing some more of his songs. He has a whole bunch of nice English songs and that end with chanting Hare Krishna. So let's see. Can everybody hear me all right? Okay, good. Okay, so we're going to start the class. I'm sorry I can't chant as well as Maha Mantra, but we're going to do Jai Radha Madhava. What's that? Maharaj, I cannot hear you. Oh, you can't hear me? You're muted. Oh, yeah. Sorry. How about now? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, yeah, the computer sometimes does that. Okay, so we're going to have Jai Radha Madhava, and you won't be able to respond, but you can respond in your own homes, uh, because the internet has this funny thing called a delay. And so, try to chant along with us in your own homes. Jai Radha Madhava, Kunjabi Hari. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Balahova Hiri Bharadhari Gopi Jana Balahova Hiri Bharadhari Yashodana Nana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashodana Nana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Te Rabana Chari Yamuna Te Rabana Chari Jai Huradam Madhova Kunja Bihari Jayu Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Malabha Giri Bharadhari Gopi Jana Malabha 
Acharya, all Sutta, Sutashi, Shimad, His Divine Grace of Ayacharana, Ravaktavadana, Gosami, Shilabhopad Ki Jai, Iskan Founder Acharya, Shilabhopad Ki Jai, Anandakoti, Vaishna, Vrin Ki Jai, Namacharya, Shiruhidas, Dakur Ki Jai, Horem Se, Kaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nidananda Shitwai Tegadatha Shiva Siddhi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Gijai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopakabhata Sayam Kun Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Gijai Vrindavanam Gijai Maturadam Gijai Chagadavasami Gijai Munamai Gijai Shimadhi Glasi Devi Gijai Samaveda Bhakta Vrinda Gijai Gaur, Prabhupada, Hadi Hadi Gaur. All glory is the assembled devotees. All glory is the assembled devotees. All glory is the assembled devotees. All glory is to Shri Guru and Gauranga. Shilapopad Ki Jai. So I'm very happy to see so many people. We got 43 here uh, on Zoom, and we have another 35 on Facebook right now. Not bad for class is more than we'd have in a normal Sunday program here. So, uh Omagana Tumaranda Shagananjana Shilakaya Chakshurud Meditam Yena Tasmai Shi Gurve Namaha. So uh I'd like to speak about something positive today since I think most of you've been talking or hearing uh about the so called co coronavirus or as I say corona virus. <laughs> Karuna means merciful. So uh, we're going to talk, not talk so much about the virus, but about something called positive psychology and Krishna consciousness, which will be a, a new slant on Krishna consciousness for you. Don't worry, it doesn't mean a new slant, meaning that no more regulated principles, no more chanting 16 rounds, but it's it's a new way of looking at Krishna consciousness and uh, utilizing traditional information. So let's describe what I'm going to talk about. So for many years, whoops, let me turn the better sound on here. Okay, that's better sound. So for many years, uh, psychologists have been talking about uh, negative psychology. Negative psychology means that people have certain uh, problems, issues, and diagnoses, and the psychologists are trying to bring people to the standard of zero. In other words, there's a negative, and they're trying to bring people to the standard of zero, which means no problems, or very little problems, or being able to cope with their problems. So, uh, that is very much in line with what Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu stated about this mature world. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu stated that the happiness in this material world is like the happiness, and he gave the example, of a man on a dunking stool. Now, you all may not be familiar with this particular example. A dunking stool is a punishment that was utilized in America as well as in India, and probably in the UK too. They would put someone on one end of what was more or less like a seesaw, like children go on seesaws, and they would have that end over the water, and they would gradually lower the person who was sitting on the end of the seesaw into the water. 
and the person was kept underwater for maybe two minutes, hopefully not too much longer than that. And when they raised the person up, the person would enjoy like anything. Why? Because the person was able to breathe. So if we look at most of the enjoyment in this world, I mean all the enjoyment, sorry about that, it's based upon uh, the cessation of an imbalance. For example, eating. One eats because they are hungry. And when you're no longer hungry, the eating process is probably not too enjoyable unless you're eating to fulfill some emotional need. So there's always a need, something that you're lacking. So you're bringing yourself to the standpoint of basically zero, no distress, no need, om shanti, 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 as they say. So that was, that's traditional psychology, very much in line with what Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught about the material world. So recently, the psychologists, within the last 20 years, have started looking at something called positive psychology. In other words, trying to ascertain how to have the best life or what they call well-being for people. And we are interested in that in Krishna consciousness too. We want the best life, not just instantaneous happiness or happiness that comes from the contact of the senses with the sense objects, etc., like that. But we want well-being, which is actually a much more holistic concept of happiness. So in order to ascertain what constitutes well-being, uh, these psychologists who are studying this or coming up with a philosophy have come up with this acronym. Don't worry, I'll get Krishna conscious in a second. <laughs> We're not completely in Maya. So they've come up with this acronym. And this acronym is PERMA, P-E-R-M-A. This is their uh, standpoint, or this is their mm, standard for what constitutes well-being in a person. So I was looking at this concept of PERMA. Actually, I've been studying quite a bit of it in my spare time, when I don't chat Hare Krishna. So I've been studying quite a bit of it and seeing that as Krishna conscious persons, or as people who are aspiring to be Krishna conscious persons, we have the best shot at achieving this perma or this well-being in life. And so I'm going to go over each item of this particular acronym. Okay, so perma, let's start with P. So the P in perma starts or represents a positive attitude. Now, right now, many of us may not be experiencing a positive attitude because of various reasons. We may be, that's good. Thank you for Aditya, Aditya for putting that up there. P means positive attitude. Uh, we may not be experiencing that because we're feeling locked up, confined. We may be worried about what? Our financial situation. Some of us may not be able to work, or those of us who are in a temple are worrying, oh, will there be money to pay for the boga? Don't worry. Krishna says, Nitya Nitya Nam Chaitanya Chaitanya Nam Eko Bohunam Yovadadati. Come on, he takes care of everybody. Actually, on the side, I was just speaking to our devotees in New Taliban, which is one of our farm communities. And they were worried, where is the boga going to come from? That is, the vegetables. And I said to them, well, you got 2,000 acres, boys. <laughs> Get to work. And uh, one person said, well, it's very hard to inspire the devotees to actually grow food. Guess what I said? Okay, as your GBC, as of two months from now, no more buying boga. <laughs> It's interesting. So let's see what happens in New Taliban. Of course, we can't do that uh, here uh, for various reasons. Maybe we could. Maybe we can inspire the devotees to grow vegetables. So anyway, so getting back to the positive attitude. So it's 
it's quite difficult nowadays with all these stressful things. Do I have the virus? Uh, you know, what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to my family? So how do devotees have a positive attitude in all circumstances? It's a very interesting question. And of course, first thing is we understand that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God. That may come as a shock to some of you. So as God, that's G-O-D, as God, he actually controls everything. He's a supreme controller. There's many verses. Ishwara Sarvabhutanam, Ridesha Arjuna Tishtati, Ramayan Sarvabhutani Antra Runani Maya. That's from the Bhagavad Gita and also Ishwara Parama Krishna Satyananda Vigraha, Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam. Which means Krishna is the supreme controller, he's the cause of all causes. Do we actually have faith in that? So in other words, not a blade of grass. Let me go back a little bit because I see my face is too big. So not a blade of grass moves without the will of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is quite interesting. Uh, although people who are not Krishna conscious think something opposite. There's an interesting verse 16.8 in the Bhagavad Gita that states, Asachama pratishtam te jagadahra Aparasparam sambhutam kimanyat kama haitukam. And this is the Vedic or atheistic viewpoint, which is they think everything is due to lust, or in other words, it's all due to chance things and evolution and all that other nice stuff. And there is no there is no reason for anything in this world. Everything happens by chance, and some people are fortunate, some people are unfortunate by chance. So uh, therefore, we, as people who have some faith, hopefully, Shraddha, Shabde, Visha, Shakahe, Sudrita, Nishchia, faith in Krishna, faith in the existence of Krishna, at least, uh, we understand that whatever is happening that is not in our control actually is being done by the agency of the Supreme Personality of God and his agents, who he is, controlling 100%. So, does that mean we should get angry at God for what he's doing? No. Because we should understand that Krishna's intention, as Krishna says in the Gita, samaham sabrabhuteshu name dveshosti priya. Krishna says I'm equal to everyone. It's not that I'm favoring some people or not favoring others. Uh, so whatever Krishna is doing, even though it may appear to be something that's really bad, and this coronavirus is really bad, not just the coronavirus, but so many things in this world, such as Janma Mrityu Jarav Yadi Dukha Dosha Darshana, then there's a reason behind it, behind it. And the reason is, for our benefit. As Krishna says in the fifth chapter of the Gita, Bhaktaram Jagatapasam, Sarva Loka Maheshwaram, Suridam Sarva Bhutanam, Gatva Mam Shanti, Richati. That he is Suridam Sarva Bhutanam, which means he's the well wisher. He's the not only a regular well wisher, not only just Mitra and friend, but he's the heart wisher. You know, he's in our heart, he's wishing us well, and so Therefore, it behooves us to try to understand uh, what Krishna is saying to us, what Krishna is doing. I mean, there's things happening on a macrocosmic level as well as a microcosmic or an individual level. On the greater level, we can say that Krishna, let's say, talk about this virus, for example, which I said I wasn't going to talk about, but I am, that Krishna is actually showing that these particular types of viruses come from people who eat meat or let's see the raising of animals for slaughter so there's some sort of reaction there so that's on a bigger level on a uh, individual level each and every one of us has to figure out what krishna is telling us 
what Krishna wants us to learn by these difficulties we're going through. And of course, we're not asking for more difficulties like Queen Kunti was asking for. Queen Kunti, of course, she said, uh, Tatra Tatra, Jagat Guru, again and again, said difficulties. But Prabhupada said we shouldn't ask for difficulties. But we should understand what are we meant to learn? I mean, I'll give you a practical example in my own life. Generally, I think I'm the controller, like most of us in this world. As Krishna says in the Gita, this, the mentality of practically every one of us who's not completely Krishna conscious is uh, Ishwaraham, Aham Bogi, Siroham, Balavan Sukhi. That I am perfect, I am powerful, I am happy, whatever. So, you know, we think we can control things, especially those of us who have some uh, knowledge of technology. Hmm. And some of you work in the technological field who are watching us right now. And, you know, you know by programming a computer a certain way, and you know you can go on the internet and Google something and find it out. So, I'm going to use an example of my own life, something I just learned. Okay, I was in Fiji. And some of the people from Fiji are watching us right now, actually. Uh, Adi Purush and Mahamantra, I see them up there. <laughs> and Gokul Bandhu. So it's nice to have people from all around the world. So uh, I was in Fiji, and I heard about this virus. I thought, well, I better go home. So I made a reservation, went on the internet with my trusty computer, and thought, you know, I've done it. Okay, it was canceled. And I thought, eh, no problem, I'm intelligent. I can make another arrangement. So I went on my trusty computer, finagled around, found which country would actually allow me to transit through it. And I thought, ha, ah, I've beaten it. Okay. Then I found out the flight was canceled and also that country wouldn't let me transit afterwards, after I made that reservation. Okay, third time. We tried it. Then after that, I thought, you know, I've beaten it. I know what I'm doing. I'm intelligent. And then guess what? They closed the airport. <laughs> so uh, what did I learn? The first two times I was in anxiety, thinking, you know, why can't I do this? The third time, I just threw my hands up like, I guess, somewhat like Draupadi threw her hands up when uh, Dushashan was attempting to uh, do his thing on her. And I said, Krishna, whatever you want, then I'll accept. And then the next, next thing I knew, Krishna sent me to stay a week on the beach, you know, swimming every day and having a good time with devotees. <laughs> so, and then I was able to, uh, to actually recover my health and be healthier than I've been in, in years. Many of you can see that I'm starting to look like I'm an Indian now. The skin color. <laughs> so Krishna had a plan. I, even I was walking the other day outside, you know, I have to keep my distance, and people said, I didn't recognize you. So, so anyway, so it also helped me uh, relax a little bit, study a little bit more, think more about my purpose of life, think more about, you know, life could end at any minute. You know, these are different lessons. Even coming back here on the airplane was practically a very frightening experience for me because it was like going through a war zone. You know, everybody with their masks and scared of each other. And, and then I was thinking, yes, this life could end at any minute. So, in my personal life, actually I've learned a lot from this particular uh, circumstance. I mean, hopefully Krishna will let me live, but anyway, so <laughs> I've learned a lot, the temporary nature of this material world. And I would say that Krishna has helped me advance tremendously in devotional service by, uh, by what's happened. I mean, one, one thing is I've, actually lost my attraction to watching Star Wars movies. <laughs> it was actually pretty good. Pretty good for me. So anyway, 
Just being honest. I mean, everyone says I preach honestly, so I'm trying to preach honest, honestly. So there's a, hmm, there's a lesson for each and every one of us in this. And we have to figure out what is this lesson? What do we have to learn? And what do we have to do about it? You know, I myself am taking my spiritual life much more seriously. And therefore, to me, I see it positively. It's Krishna. Krishna loves me. And Krishna is helping me in this way. And when one sees in that way, there's an interesting verse in the Bhagavatam, 1014, uh, 58, about uh, padam padam yad vi padam nate sham. There's danger at every step in this material world. And we're actually learning this. And uh, it says that one who takes shelter of the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, this whole ocean of material existence becomes shrunk uh, to the size of a calf's hoof print. And one can easily cross beyond or cross over this ocean of material existence. And so, and it's described in the Bhagavatam in the purports of the Acharyas that uh, one doesn't even notice how they've crossed over this material existence if one takes shelter of the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, in that, in that way, of course, we just touched upon the first point, the P in the Purma. If we see Krishna everywhere in, in everything, and of course, in the, another verse that comes to mind, 630 in the Gita, you know, Yomam Pashati Sarvatra, Saram Chamai Pashati, Vashaham Na Pranashami, Sacha me na pranashati. That one who sees Krishna everywhere and everything in Krishna is never lost to Krishna, basically. And so everything becomes positive. Vishwam porno sukhayate. That's another verse. That means a devotee of the Lord sees the whole universe as blissful. Now, that may be a hard step to take. <laughs> It's all blissful, you know, wow. Are you in bliss? But the whole, <laughs> I know that sounds difficult to everybody. I see some people laughing at that, but uh, it does. That's the Krishna conscious standpoint. It's blissful. And then, as I often said to the devotees as we were going through this whole thing, you know, if Krishna gives you a lemon, you make lemonade from it. In other words, you can turn everything positive. Uh, and you look at these great acharyas. I mean, even now, that, as an example, I wasn't even thinking of this before, of my wonderful friend, Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj, who had this terrible uh, cancer. I mean, it was just eating his whole body. And he utilized that particular circumstance, how to teach people how to leave the body. And he was never depressed about it. He saw Krishna everywhere and everything. I'm not, I'm not wishing that upon anybody. And I saw that with Prabhupada, uh, a similar thing. So obviously I hope everybody has healthy, long life and blessing everybody. You all have my blessings here. Blessings. So, but we have to be ready to deal with all these circumstances and be positive about everything. Very, very important. And I think the psychologists hit it right on the nail, but they don't know how to be positive about everything because certain circumstances arise and because if they're not Krishna conscious, if they're not believing in God, what's the positivity there? You know, if Krishna takes everything away, and he does that sometimes with his devotees, yes, yaham anagrinam shanai, how can you be positive about it? But the, the real lack is the loving relationship with Krishna. We'll get on to that in a second. All right. So I'm looking at the time. I don't want to go too long. And also I want to I have time open for questions at the end of this whole discussion. So the next one is E. Now, what does E stand for in the PERMA? E stands for engaged. Maybe you can write that down for everybody at Digi so they can see it. Engage. Engage means, for those of you who are Westerners watching us, it means being in the flow. For those of you who are computer programmers, it means getting so much into your programming you forget about everything. 
Does everybody understand what I'm talking about? You just, I think many of you do computer programming or work with computers, or if there's some musicians here, like our friend Maha Mantra <laughs> and Adi, who's hoping to be a musician. So Adi Purusha. So uh, <laughs> I want to be. So uh, when you really get engaged, absorbed in something, then you don't notice anything else. And so in Krishna consciousness, of course, there's a wonderful verse in the Gita, Brahmaprata Brahma Havir Brahmadno Brahmano Hutam Brahma Tena Kantavyam Brahma Karma Sabadinam. Basically, Prabhupada's first translation of that verse was that if one makes a full contribution to Brahman, then everything becomes spiritualized. His life becomes spiritualized, the offering becomes spiritualized, the result of the offering becomes spiritualized. Everything, so that's absorption. So in Krishna consciousness, we have something called Varnashram, and I'm talking more, more or less like Varna now, not Ashram. Uh, Varna means we all have particular things we can do for Krishna and everything you do for Krishna in accordance with your psychophysical nature can give you perfection. I mean, that's wonderful. Like Arjuna, what was he doing for Krishna? He was fighting to protect others and that was his psychophysical nature. And Krishna said to him in the Gita, that even if you don't want to fight, you're going to be forced to fight, but for the wrong purpose. Because everybody has a nature. You know, some people like to study. Some people like philosophy. Some people like to manage. Some people like making money. Some people like, what else? Uh, like working with their hands, doing little artistic things. Some people like building buildings. Well, guess what? You should do all those, any of those things that fit your psychophysical nature, you can do them for Krishna. The whole point is to be absorbed. Like Prabhupada said, the duty of the spiritual master is to ascertain the psychophysical nature of the disciple and engage her or him according to the situation. And that's wonderful. So in other words, I was asked the other day about this verse in the Gita, where Krishna says uh, that hmm, he who uh, teaches this Bhagavad Gita, the devotees, is most dear. So one other devotee asked me the question, does that mean everyone else is less dear to Krishna? And my reply was pretty much in line with what Prabhupada taught us, uh, is that if everyone's contributing to it, then they're all getting equal benefit. Like Prabhupada gave the example, which is a little dated example of the Indian railway system. And the Indian railway system has this motto. What is it? Keep the wheels turning. So in other words, someone is shoveling the coal, someone is fixing a load of locomotives, but everybody is participating, getting equal benefit. So it's the same thing. Someone is cooking, uh, for Krishna, someone is doing the deity worship, someone is distributing books, and it's all for the benefit of the general mass of people, bringing people to Krishna consciousness. That's why Prabhupada called it the Krishna consciousness movement. So, uh, one needs to find something that they really can be absorbed in for Krishna. Like I see Jagat is watching it right now, and he's absorbed, he's doing his like today he was absorbed in helping me get the network together. Like 100% absorbed, like Samadhi, network Samadhi. So, <laughs> internet Samadhi. You know, he probably dreams about computers and things like that. But that's perfection. So that's the second point of the PERMA. Everybody remembers that? Engagement, or being absorbed, or being in the zone, or being in the flow because that's when we're happy. When we're doing that, when we're in the flow, when a musician is just absorbed in doing music for Krishna, of course. <laughs> so, so Krishna consciousness gives us the means of doing that. And the next one, P-E-R. 
is something that's very important. It's called relationships or relation. So we have many relationships or relations. Uh, for example, let's take Krishna, for example. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He's all attractive. He loves every one of us. We all have a personal relationship with him. We have a loving propensity that we want to expand unlimitedly, as Prabhupada says in the Krishna book. And we get frustrated in that loving propensity when we try to involve the loving propensity in other objects. Uh, of course, I'm not saying we don't love everybody. We'll get to that in a second. But if we invest our loving propensity with Krishna, Krishna is always with us. One of the things that really inspired me when I joined the Krishna Conscious Movement was that I just needed to chant Krishna's name and my best friend was with me. Now, normally, you know, your best friend may be in the other part of the world, and particularly now that there's this lockdown, you may not be able to see your best friend except on the internet. In fact, I was missing all of you. I was locked away in, in Fiji, <laughs> suffering on the beach. So <laughs> now I'm here, but I still can't see you except on the internet. So what can we do? So, but with Krishna, you don't have to go on the internet. We know his email address, telephone number. Uh, every, like Prabhupada said sometimes, he didn't use the email address because he didn't have email addresses then. He said, we know his name, address, and telephone number. And every time you say, Krishna, Krishna's dancing on the tip of your tongues, he's with you, he's in your heart. I mean, it's, it's amazing. So that relationship is there. Also, centered on Krishna, we can love everyone. The Ishopanishad says, uh, what is it? Yastu Sarvani Bhutani Atman Eivanu Pashati. That one has a vision of everyone being connected to Krishna. Another verse in the Gita, Vame Vangsa Jiva Luke, Jiva Bhuta Sanatana, Manashashtani Indriyani Prakritishtani Karshati. That everyone is part and parcel of Krishna, you know, so we're all the same family. So as far as relationship, we should have very satisfying relationships if we see like this. I mean, sometimes we may have differences of opinion and everything like that, but... I would say that, you know, I have more loving relationships now and I've learned how to love more being a Krishna conscious person or trying to be a Krishna conscious person. I have to be careful of my hubris. Trying to be a Krishna conscious person than I've ever experienced before. I have so many friends. Not only Krishna is my friend, I hope. <laughs> Krishna was even Ravana's friend. So I have so many friends and well-wishers and it's Krishna, and it's just, life is blissful. Life is very blissful. So relationship is very, very important. And then also, just to finish up with that, with the R, uh, there's a verse in the mm, Nectar of Instruction, Dadati Prati Granati Guyam Akyati Prichati, Umte Bojate Chaiva, that we engage with other people in giving prasadam, accepting prasadam, Revealing the mind, helping people understand Krishna consciousness, uh, giving gifts, accepting gifts. I mean, that R is most completely fulfilled. The relationship is most completely fulfilled in Krishna consciousness. Okay? We got two more. M and A. Okay. Let's see. We're doing well for time. So M means meaning. Okay having a meaning to life. Also, on a, on a personal basis, the reason I, one of the main reasons I joined Krishna Consciousness is because I couldn't figure out any other meaning of life. In spite of my mother's insistence that the meaning of life was to serve her. <laughs> and uh, I asked her, which is... What you should all do if someone says that to you, why? And that'll pretty much frustrate anyone who says that your meaning of life is to serve them, unless they happen to be a devotee, whatever, a spiritual master, then they can give a philosophical explanation. So I asked why. What is the meaning of life? What is life meant for? Where did I come from? Where am I going? So 
What is the use of a life without meaning? And of course, that's more or less like existentialism. And some of you may have heard of the philosophy of existentialism, like Nietzsche or Sartre, who said that you have to develop your own meaning, but ultimately life has no meaning. That's pretty depressing. And if you look at these people who have that particular belief, they usually ended up committing suicide or being extremely depressed. So having a meaning, a purpose in life. Uh, so we should be able to ask ourselves, what is our purpose? And of course, the ultimate purpose is to actually uh, understand our real nature, who we are in the spiritual realm, what is our relationship with Krishna, and then also this, this purpose is connected with that purpose, such as what? Helping people come to Krishna. Uh, it's very important. Like what Aditya Narayan Prabhu does with the book distribution. You know, it's a very important thing. It's Of course, one may look at book distribution just as distributing books, but that's not really the point. The meaning of it. We should always be asking, asking ourselves, what is the meaning of what, whatever we're doing? What is the reason we're doing it? You know, Sankalpa. That's uh, Sanskrit. In other words, we're distributing books to bring people to Krishna. It's, it's, then it becomes very blissful, but if you just look at yourself as a book distributor, then it's not so dis blissful, but if you say, to bring people to Krishna, to please the spiritual master, then it all becomes tied in with relationship and the, uh, the are there. So, I... I experience that having Krishna conscience gives my life meaning. So there's no question of ever getting depressed because I have a purpose in life. And then the final one is A. And you can write this down. That means achievement or accomplishment. So in other words, we have to feel we're getting somewhere in life. We're achieving something. We're accomplishing something. So, of course, getting back to Ditya Narayan Prabhu, who sponsored this talk, that, <laughs> just a joke, that, you know, when we bring people to Krishna consciousness, we feel like I've achieved something. I mean, every time I am able to bring someone to Krishna consciousness, I become very blissful. Uh, because it, it means my life has meaning, I'm achieving something. Every time we make some spiritual advancement, and you can actually tell your spiritual, you can ascertain how much you're getting advanced or you're advancing spiritually. Prophet said that, just like you can tell how you're growing uh, by measuring your height. Uh, when I was young, my ma mother would measure my height against uh, the wall. She'd make a mark on the wall and every of course, every day I measured it, but it didn't grow every day. But after a while, you could see how I was growing. It became very inspiring. So by purifying your existence, and uh, we can actually see how we're achieving things in this world. And so book distribution, prasadam, uh, chanting, and also Vasudeva, Bhagavati, Bhakti Yoga, Prayojita, Janayati Asu Vairagya. Gyanam Chayyada Haitakam. By performing devotional service, one actually loses a taste for things that are not making them happy. I mean, like I just gave the example of my Star Wars taste. Uh, you know, it's just like, it just went away. Amazing. I'm just thinking, it would never happen. And it just went away. So, so I could see, wow, Krishna's given me a little bit of spiritual advancement. And so... This is very inspiring. I'm achieving something. Because if you don't achieve something, if you don't feel you're making advancement, don't feel you're helping people, don't see substantial uh, objective evidence, then how could you really be satisfied in life? So anyway, so this is my analysis of uh, positive psychology and how it fits in with Krishna consciousness. I became very inspired when I uh, started reading about positive psychology. And I think we, or spiritualists in general, can uh, really be the only ones who are practicing to the highest degree positive psychology. So, 
On that happy note, we'll open this up for questions, if anyone has a question about anything I might have said. A question? Yeah, oh, there is Mother Tulsi in the dark. Okay, what's the question? Okay, so we have some uh, younger people here online, devote younger, de you no, know, not younger you. devotees. <laughs> no, I'm very senior. <laughs> in age, uh, old age, uh, but um, anyway, okay, so if we just started thinking of the things we're attached to, like, oh man, I have to like, I'll know I'm getting advanced when I'm starting to become detached to this thing I'm really attached to, that can be, be like a negative kind of mentality. Yeah, so therefore, therefore we don't or think, not, we, we don't, they're not enthusiastic. Yeah, let me answer your question. So there, therefore, we don't think about what we're attached to. I mean, I didn't worry, just using the example of Star Wars. I didn't, I didn't worry about my attachment to it. I mean, it wasn't against the regular principles. I understood it. I was aware of it. It did make me guilty. But uh, I, I just took a positive tact. You know, Krishna helped me in many ways just taking a positive deck by chanting Vasudevi Bhagavati. You don't, we should not think negatively about giving things up. Unless there are obvious, you know, things that are really dangerous to our health. I mean, that's obvious. But, we, but even when we do give things up, we should have a positive reason for doing them. I mean, for example... One thing I gave up is I was, I was going to take my dinner right now, but <laughs> so I gave up. <laughs> I gave up taking my dinner, but I'm much happier talking to all of you. I'm going to take dinner afterwards. Don't worry. I'm much happier talking to all of you. So it's not that it was difficult for me to do that. So when you're doing something, it's called a higher taste. Rasa varjam, rasa upyasa, padam drishtani bhartate. One experiences a higher taste, then uh, it's quite easy. Then you don't worry about giving things. It naturally happens. Just like when you grow up, you naturally give up playing with blocks. I, I haven't played with blocks in, God knows, 60, <laughs> 65 years. And nobody grabbed my blocks away, you know, blocks, A, B, C, D, you know, blocks. Nobody grabbed my blocks away from me. So you don't worry about giving up things. Automatically, you become so happy, spiritually absorbed, there's no need at all to think about giving up things. That's spiritual life. And, of course, that's described. Rasa Varjam, Rasa Pyasa, Param Jasa by experiencing a higher taste, what is fixed in consciousness? So good question. No, we don't want to be negative about anything. Just positive, positive, positive. And then we're happy. And I try to do that too in my own life. See Krishna everywhere. See Krishna in everything. And what does Krishna want me to learn? And Krishna loves me. When you're working out of love, then... Life becomes very pleasant. You can do so many things that you ordinarily would not want to do if you're doing something out of love, right? I mean, oftentimes I give the example of a lady who works in the bank. Of course, the, the banks are pretty much closed up except for the drive-in windows right now. But usually you have these ladies who work in the bank and they're sitting in this booth for eight hours a day, which is pretty much torture as far as I'm concerned. And if you asked me to sit in a booth for eight hours a day, I'd be pretty upset. And so, but they have a picture of their family whom they love. And they're not thinking of it as austerity. Error. They just keep looking at their picture of their family in between counting the money. And they're happy. They're smiling. So when you do things out of love, everything's easy. So there's no need to give things up. Uh, think positively. If you have the right mood, just like, all right, let's say we talk about chanting rounds. You know, 
You chant, or I chant 16 rounds and 64 at a codice when I get a chance. And so I'm not thinking I have to do it. Every time you think you have to do something, it makes it miserable. So I'm thinking I'm chanting my rounds because I want to connect with Krishna. I'm chanting my rounds because I want to please Prabhupada. I'm chanting my rounds because I want to advance spiritually. And I'm chanting my rounds because I like it too. But so there's a positive reason. It's not that, oh my God, 16 rounds and what do you get? Another day old or deeper in debt, as the song goes. I don't know if any of you remember that song from the 1930s. 16 rounds, what do you get? Another day older, deeper in debt. Uh, Yamaraj, don't call me because I can't come. I owe my whatever. <laughs> so, anyway, so so it's positive. Naturally. You know, so I don't play with blocks anymore. Maybe when I get a little older, I will, but not now. <laughs> so, I'm feeling very young. I mean, the body is old. Uh, but I'm feeling young, happy in Krishna consciousness. And so, so, you know, I realized that these principles that were being taught by the positive psychologists were pretty much what I was agreeing with before. And I hadn't put them into such a uh, system, but I'm using that system to explain Krishna consciousness. So, any other questions or comments or are you? Yes, Ayush. Mm -hmm. Hey, Krishna Maharaj. Uh, I just have a question that um, when you were saying to grow in spiritual life, mm -hmm. uh, you can see, uh, oh, this is happening, so I'm getting a little bit bigger, a little bit higher in spiritual life. Yes. But in a point of time, you may be thinking, this is a symptom uh, that I'm getting higher. Oh, my God, I'm getting a, becoming a better devotee. <laughs> and then at that, that time, since you are getting more qualities, you feel more proud and you feel, uh, you start to fall to mind. So how to avoid that, but still know that you're progressing in devotional service, how to keep a humble attitude always. Like for me, I'm, I, in my emails, I write humble servant. I'm trying to develop that attitude, attempts to develop a humble attitude. So that's a bit, that's actually quite a good, Question, Ayush, thank you for it. Uh, the answer I traditionally give is that we need to be surrounded in the association of devotees because as soon as we start to, as the expression probably used, get puffed up. That's, <laughs> it's not one of the traditional expressions in the English dictionary, but probably use that regard to Mr. Frog, that example of Mr. Frog, I think you know that. Yeah. <laughs> puffed himself up so big he finally exploded uh, because he wa wanted to measure the size of the ocean. So what I experience is that when we're with the devotees, if we start to uh, get puffed up, you know, with a, oh, I'm so advanced, you know, I'm basically I'm God's gift to uh, humankind or whatever, <laughs> then we get, we get pulled back, you know, Hey, uh, hey, buddy, uh, you're not like that. I, I'll, I'll give you a practical example in my own life, because I like to give examples of my own issues. This was many years ago when I was a little older than you. And I was on traveling Sankirtan, which means the book distribution, for those of you who don't know, and distributing Prabhupada's books. But I was actually, I was arranging programs for a sannyasi. Uh, and I was traveling by myself because I was like going ahead of him and distributing books. And I became quite good at distributing books. And I thought, you know, I'm basically one of the best book distributors in the ESCON movement. I actually was one of the first. Uh, I was one of the first, you know. <laughs> I'm proud of that. So anyway, so I, I was thinking I'm one of the best book distributors. So anyway, so finally I meet this particular sannyasi, I was a brahmachari at that time. I meet this particular sannyasi and he uh, he says, how are you doing? I said, hi, I've become so good I can distribute a book to anybody I want. And he started laughing. And I, sa I said, uh, just watch. And 
So I spent the next three hours trying to get someone to tell me the time of day with the speak of take a book. So being in the Association of Devotees, you know, my false prestige was really cut down quickly. So it's important to sadhu sangha, sadhu sangha, sarva sashrakoi, lava matra, sadhu sangha, sarva hoy, to always be with people who can correct you and take corrections. I mean, taking corrections is pretty hard. It's one of the hardest things in this world when someone tells you, you're wrong. And naturally, when, when you get a higher position, the more advanced you get, it may get a little harder. What do they say? Pride goes before the fall. Absolute power, you know, whatever, is very contaminated. So, so we always, I always have to remember in my situation, you know, I'm a guru, supposed to be absolute and everything, all those nice things. So I have to remember that I'm just a humble servant of Krishna. That's another way of dealing with it. That I'm not perfect. I am simply, you know, a servant of a servant of a servant of the Lord who maintains the uh, gopis of Vrindavan, Gopi Bharata, Parakamala, Dasa, Dasa, Dasanu, Dasa. And it makes me blissful to think like that. In other words, when I'm sitting, even as a guru on the Vyasa sign, I'm thinking that I'm serving the people who are offering me some respect. And it's very blissful. To actually serve people is, is much more blissful. Even Lord Chaitanya, he's Krishna himself, and he's there because he wanted to enjoy serving more than being served. Isn't it? One of the reasons Lord Chaitanya or Krishna appeared as Lord Chaitanya is that he was thinking Radharani is enjoying more than him. And so he's saying, I want to enjoy as much as Radharani, so let me become a servant of myself. So think about that. But it's hard, yes. It, it definitely is hard as one gets straight, Janmai Shvarya Shutasya Shibi Redavana Adapuman. It's another verse, which means if one has a uh, good birth, just like those of you from India, if you're a Trivedi or a Chaturvedi or a Gupta, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Let's look at some of the names. Anyway, if you're from a Brahmin family, that's a doctor's name. Gupta is a doctor's name, actually. So uh, if you're from a Brahmin family, that's Janma. I am a good birth. Like this. And, uh, or one, anyway, the whole caste system. Janma Aishvarya, if one has a lot of money, it's very bewildering. Very, very bewildering. Uh, Janma Aishvarya Shrutash, if one is very learned, able to juggle words, it's very bewildering. And Shrivya, if one is actually very materially beautiful, it's very difficult. Or attractive or handsome. Actually, there's an interesting story in the Chaitanya Charitamrita because Lord Chaitanya was so handsome, uh, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya was worried about his sannyas. <laughs> he, um, he said to uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I'll give you sannyas, you know, I'll train you up as a sannyasi, basically, because you're so young, you're, you know, you're only 24. He was only 24 when he took sannyas. And he was the most attractive person. So yeah. these, these are dangerous things. So one has to be very alert when one is given an opulence by the Lord. Uh, also, another point is uh, the Shikshashika. The Dhanam, the Janam, the Sundarim, Kavitam, Ba, Jagadisha, Kamaye. Mama Janmani, Janmani, Shvare, Bhavatad, Bhakti, Hoi, Tiki, Tvaye. The Dhanam, the Janam, the Sundarim, Kavitam, Ba, Jagadisha. I don't, you know, one has to really be detached from these things and simply think, I just want to love you, Krishna, and serve you, Krishna, and the devotees, life after life. Janmani, Janmani Shure, Bhavatad Bhakti, Hoi Tuki Tvaye. So, anyway, the Shikshashika helps us deal with it. But I think it's primarily, to answer your question, it's the association of devotees that help us, okay? Yes, that's in mind. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Ayush. So, any other questions by anybody? Let's see, what time is it? Oh, it's already 6.09. Questions? We have one. 
Oh, Rishikesh. Rishikena, Rishikesh, Sevan, and Bhakti Ruchute. You have a question? Can you speak clearer so everyone can hear you? I, I can hear you, but it's not so clear. I think someone else can take the question. I'm in a headphone source, not digital phone. Uh, my question was, uh, how do, uh, what is the uh, correct way of expression of humility? How do you express humility in a genuine way? Okay, how do you express humility in a genuine way? Well, that's an inter interesting question. As oftentimes when I'm asked that question, I give the answer that humility means hmm, not to think less of yourself, but to think of yourself less. <laughs> That's an interesting question, interesting answer. In other words, humility doesn't mean simply to go around telling everybody, oh, I'm just a humble servant, I'm useless. Then you get very depressed. And that's another, that's another way of we can express self-centeredness if we just talk about ourselves. But real humility means to understand that we're servants of Krishna, servants of everybody, uh, especially Krishna, his devotees and others. And uh, sometimes just give up our own let's say, objectives or plans were the objectives and plans of the person who we love the most. That's Krishna. Just knowing, trying to ascertain, or, all right, going back to the first P, uh, the positive attitude, trying to understand what Krishna wants, what Krishna is saying, what Krishna wants, and then acting accordingly. And I think it's also, humility is also described by Rupa Goswami, and the nutshell verse of the Bhakti Rasam Rita Sindhu, Anya Bilashita Shunyam Gyanakarman Avritam Anukuyena Krishna Nushilana Bhakti Rutamam. To serve Krishna according to what he wants, to serve him uh, actively and to do it joyfully. So I, I would I would say that that's a pretty good definition of humility. To do it joyfully. And not to consider yourself the doer to consider that you're simply being instrumental. And that's what Krishna says to Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita, that be my instrument, Arjuna. Being instrumental, not claiming proprietorship, you know, I've accomplished this, I've accomplished that. Uh, because really, what can we accomplish? I mean, everything, as Krishna says in the Gita, I'm the ability in people. I'm the strength of the strong, the intelligence of the intelligent. And if we remember that, you know, my intelligence, ability, strength, whatever, belongs to Krishna. It comes from Krishna. Because if Krishna doesn't want, then I could just sit here in the back of the microphone and just like not say anything uh, that people will understand. So Krishna's given me the intelligence and I give Krishna all the credit for it. All right, so what do you think? Anybody else before we end? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, ah, thank you so much. Good to see you. Nice Krishna. Hare Krishna. So my, quest, uh, my question is, uh, you know, now it's a time of anxiety. Yeah. And uh, of course, uh, the whole world is in anxiety. And as devotees, we are trying to see what best we can uh, keep ourselves engaged with. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we are basically been a social movement, right? You know, every day we, we our life has been like being with devotees and association and prasadam and Sunday feast. True. So we are missing that a lot. Of course, there is so much of this association over the internet. And also as days grows by, it's like how to handle this uncertainty. It's uh, still looming what's going to happen. Uh, you know, when the thoughts of uncertainty comes in, what should we tell ourselves and, you know, how to handle this in a practical way? Good question. Um, actually, I'm going to say something maybe controversial. Anxiety is not bad. 
Because without, without some anxiety, uh, I mean, definitely, when I was a new devotee, Prabhupada would put us in anxiety all the time. And uh, a little anxiety. I mean, I'm not talking about crippling anxiety or anything like that. And so it gets us thinking. Because without anxiety, if we're, if we're just like, Prabhupada said, an easy life and Krishna consciousness don't go well together. So without a little anxiety, then we really don't make any changes in life or just be introspective. And so this anxiety should inspire us to really go internal in our own Krishna consciousness. Because right now, as you said, we're not able to socialize so much on the internet. And this is not as, frankly, it's not as satisfying as seeing you personally in the same room like that. You know, I've seen a whole bunch of little squares of people's heads right now. <laughs> <laughs> on, the, on the screen and so it's it's not a, it's really not as satisfying or as personal in fact i am dealing with some devotees personally now but they have to stay 50 feet away from me because i'm in self-isolation <laughs> so i am able to do some things like that so if krishna puts us in a circumstance like that it krishna it may be that krishna is telling us to go a little internal with our own selves. And also another thing I've found is that basically I think very few of us are completely alone. You know, with fam we're usually with family members or friends. So it's really helping us deepen relationships with our family. I've seen before that, uh, before this thing happened, many people really never talked to their husbands or wives. <laughs> Is that true? I mean, other other than, you know, uh, what's for dinner tonight? <laughs> or when can we go to the temple? So when you're really stuck in this, I don't want to use the word stuck, but in, you're in the same room with the same person in the same house, uh, you got to get to know your husband and wife. <laughs> you got to get to know the other devotees. I mean, I experienced this in, uh, I was in Fiji and, uh, Locked, locked in an unfortunate situation in my beach house. Anyway, with <laughs> that's a joke. But I, I was uh, with some very, very nice devotees, and one of them is watching right now, Gokul Bandhu. Probably other devotees are watching with him at the same time. Uh, you know, we were basically isolated there. A very nice family, uh, Sanatan Saki, Gokul Bandhu, and actually, you know, really brought us closer together, you know, deep in the relationship. And it, and it also made me think that, you know, we should have these sorts of deep relationships and appreciate each other more. Because when we're too much social in a larger sense, we, we tend to uh, not really have deep relationships. It, it's more like social life. So I think when, when things open up again, when this is one of the things that positively, you know, I think that Krishna is showing us this. So when things open up and we can really appreciate each other more and get deeper into relation, you know, relationship with each other. I mean, I, I'm seeing myself. I didn't, I didn't appreciate all of you when I had the chance. You know, I'm more or less like, you know, hello, Hare Krishna. Oh, you want some blessings? Here's a blessing. <laughs> You know, two-handed blessing. You know, Namaste. You know, of course, everyone's learning how to how to greet each other. Namaste now, <laughs> even Donald Trump. So, <laughs> so there's an advantage <laughs> even to him. So, so from that standpoint, things will open up. Things will open up, and uh, I think we're learning lessons about relationships now. So, I hope that answers that question about. You know, relations, we are very social. And even uh, today I was speaking to Drista Prabhu when he was stre stressing that maybe three, four times a week I should put out some video messages to be sent to the WhatsApp group. You know, just some things that inspire me. Just, just to tie everybody together because we need to feel together. Because we are together. And uh, so, good question. Good question. We got Thank a lot. you so much, Mother. Thank you. Thank you so much. Got a lot of people, 95 people, including uh, Facebook right now watching us. 
I want to thank, thank Jaga for hooking up all this uh, internet stuff for me. He's a whiz. <laughs> so, oh, Mother Tulsi, you have a question. All right, one more question from you. Okay, so um, how to deal with um, like moments of or periods, not clinical, but just periods or times of depression? Not clinical, I'm talking about. Just, <laughs> clinical, you know. see a doctor. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think, I think of those times, uh, we should start to count our blessings. You know, oftentimes we, we concentrate on what's going wrong. And there are a lot of things going wrong in the world. I mean, obviously in our personal lives or whatever going wrong. And uh, if we think about how fortunate we are to have Krishna consciousness, uh, then it, I think that'll help too. And, and you know, de depression may be a sign that we have some needs. You know, there, there, there are certain needs that maybe I don't have enough loving relationships or I'm not, I'm not loving enough with other people. So, we should do something about it. All, I'm not saying depression is bad. It's a sign that we should do something about it to come to the standpoint of positivity. Use that as uh, a sign, a call to action, right? And take responsibility for it. And if you study my book, Empathic Communication, you will understand that. So, I think we should end now, right, Aditya? Because it's time. Where's the prashadam? <laughs> <laughs> Is it virtual prashadam or something like that tonight? You can sing the prashadam prayers and everyone can honor it their house. <laughs> All right. So, why don't you, why don't you sing prashadam prayers? I just have, all, all I have is steamed vegetables and sauerkraut, so. That's my Sunday feast. <laughs> okay, you want to do the Prashanam prayers for everybody? So, uh, we'd like to thank uh, His Holiness Big Krishna Goswami Maharaj for the wonderful class and uh, so interesting, like Parma, P R M A, to bring us to Prema. So, I really like that talk, Maharaj. And all the five points were like really wonderful, and uh, we can practically apply these points uh, in our life. So uh, thank you so much, Maharaj, for blessing us with your kind association. We look forward to uh, more association with you. Thank so you. thank you to each one of you who uh, joined online. Thank you. Uh, those who joined online and also on Facebook, on Zoom and Facebook. So uh, thank you for giving us your virtual association. Nice to see so many devotees here. And uh, also uh, like to make the announcement that uh, we are continuing all our services in the temple, regular deity worship, offering making the pie offerings and artics and uh, since we are not having guests at the temple uh, if you like to help out uh, contribute towards the artic every day for 51 dollars or we'd like to sponsor rajbog artic every, uh, offering every day for again 51 dollars or anything you'd like to contribute uh, this time we would really appreciate any of your donations uh, you can either uh, paypal it to newgoloka108 at gmail.com or you visit our website uh, newgoloka.com and we have links there so uh, any donation is very much appreciated so uh, thank you for considering and uh, thank you all so much uh, Mother Lila Shakti do you want to add it? so thank you everyone for joining and thank you again Maharaj for blessing us with your kind association Hare Krishna uh, All glorious to his divine grace Srila Prabhupada Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Jai Very well Jai